Now, I've done many versions of crepes on the show, but I'm going to show you another one. And this one is absolutely stunning. It's crepes with caramelised apples. So delicious. First, we need to get our crepe batter done. So I always love to show my crepe batter because it's super simple. Plain flour, and that's the difference between crepes and pancakes. Pancakes have self-raising flour or a leavening agent like baking powder, where crepes just have plain flour. We're going to add a pinch of salt along with some sugar. Whenever I'm making sweet crepes, I like to add some sugar to it. We'll just give that a quick whisk. Make a well in the centre and then we can crack the eggs. This is something I love to do as a little girl and I think it's really nice to show kids how to make crepes because it's easy and it's fun. So last egg in. Break the eggs up. And I always like to say, bring in the sides of the wall. You can see little by little, I'm bringing in the flour to the eggs. And the reason I do this slowly is so we don't get lumps because you don't want lumps in your crepe batter. Once it starts to get quite thick and harder to whisk, we can start adding some more liquid. So just some milk, add a little bit of milk. Whisk that in. Again, still just trying to bring in those sides. Now, a pancake batter is quite thick. When you're doing crepes, it should be really thin. In fact, it should be as thin as pouring cream. That right now is way too thick. So some more milk. And then just leave about a quarter of a cup of the milk to the side. I'm going to add that after this crepe batter has rested in the fridge. Now, you can start making your crepe straight away, but I like to pop it into the fridge for about one hour, even better, overnight, and you'll see the crepes turn out way better. So a little bit of that Glad Wrap, pop it on top of the batter, like so, and then into the fridge to rest. Right, while that's resting, let's get on to the apple component. So in a pan, I'm just going to pop the heat onto a medium-high heat. This is a French recipe, so a little bit of butter for this. We want about 20 grams of butter, unsalted preferably, because we're going to be adding some sugar. So in with our butter, and we want that to melt straight away. What I'm going to do is just stew some apples. So in with some sugar. We'll just sprinkle that in. And as that sugar and butter start to melt into each other, we can add our apples. I'm using some Granny Smith apples. I've just finely sliced them just so I can speed up the cooking process. We'll take them out of the water. After I've chopped my apples, I always like to put them into some acidulated water. That just ensures that they don't brown. In they go. I love the smell of butter and sugar. This is going to smell even better in a second when I add some brandy. Now this is Calvados, which is an apple brandy. If you can't find it, you can just use classic brandy or you could use some apple schnapps. So in that goes. Oh, mm, that is the best smell ever. So this is just going to bubble away, caramelise slightly, and then I'm just going to turn off the heat and we can start making the crepes. How good do these apples look? They're glossy, they're slightly golden, just right. Now I'm going to heat up my crepe pan. So we'll just turn that on to a medium heat. And once that warms up, we can add some butter. Now this is a non-stick pan, but I do like to add some butter just for extra assurance. So just a small knob of butter and just get that in and around the pan. Once that starts to melt, which it is now, we can add some of the apples. So a little bit of the apples and that sticky toffee-like syrup that we've got there and just scatter them around. And then gluing it all together with our crepe mixture. So if you can imagine eating this, you get a little mixture of the apple and the crepe all in one mouthful, so good. Now this has rested and you'll see that it's thickened up slightly. And this is when I add some of that reserved milk. So give that a whisk again and we'll drizzle in a splash of milk. Okay. Now using a ladle, we're going to add about three quarters of this ladle full of the mixture over our apples and just pour that all over. 
making sure there's no gaps whatsoever. So just keep moving the pan around and get it as thin as possible. That looks good. Back onto the induction stovetop and just let that sit there for about ooh, 30 seconds to a minute. Once it detaches, I can flip it over, give it another minute and make some more. Last crate to flip. Oh, perfect. Once you flip them, it only needs just a few moments on that side. Turn the induction off. It's done its job. And now we can just flip this crepe on itself. Now you'll see that the apples are sticking into the crepe batter there. If they fall out a little bit, it doesn't matter. You can just pop them in again, just like this one here. Press it down and it just looks like a very simple recipe, but you'd be surprised about how delightful the simple combination of crepe batter and apples are. So we'll pop the third one next to the others. And I just like to add a light dusting of icing sugar. And I have to have a taste of this one. Oh, the perfect crepe. Crispy on the outside, softer in the centre there. A little apple, mm, that Calvados. This really reminds me of going to Paris and trying crepes over there, scattered along the Champs Elysees. You can get a crepe anywhere. This one tastes exactly the same. Well, almost. Mm.